this is um, one site here that we're working on, but also we're working on about another four or five different sites as well around uh, Snenton and St Anne's and oh, really? um, one across uh, in Radford actually right. doing these. So together there's a project we're calling them sort of fruit forest project. Excellent. Ideally we'd, we'd like them to go to the council and, and talk to them about the possibility of rolling it out across the city and, yeah. and doing as many as possible. Particularly on the kind of small municipal green spaces that aren't really used by anybody. Yeah. Just, this area here is going to be more of a hedge rather than trees, so it's going to be black currants and blueberries along this kind of area. And in the corner, a jostaberry. We're actually going for three kiwi vines up there. Um, not the standard kiwi that we'd buy in the shops, the green furry ones. A hard, slightly harder, hardier variety of those, which give smaller fruit, but smooth skinned and much nicer, much sweeter, and uh, you can eat the whole thing. So there you go, you've just planted a blueberry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's better if you have more than one variety close together yeah. and then the pollination as the bees come and take pollen between the different plants. Yeah. It benefits having a different variety nearby and then you'll get a bigger crop of fruit. We're going to create a kind of raised bed here yeah. Yeah. With, with lots of this other compost. And then in there we can plant some bulbs and perhaps some strawberries in there as well. Yeah. Whenever you're planting bushes or trees, the worst thing for them is competition from something like grass. If you let grass grow right around the young yeah. bush or tree, yeah. then the grass competes for the moisture in the moisture, soil yeah, yeah. Uh, and also a little bit for the nutrients. And especially in the first year or so, it, it can compete and the grass can be stronger than, the, than yeah. this. And, and this can die. So it's important to create an area without any grass. And we do that, the, the easiest, cheapest way of doing that is to use cardboard. So we've just got some cardboard boxes, flattened boxes yeah. from the co-op. And um, we'll lay those on top of this grass, close up around the plant. And then the cardboard's not very attractive and it will blow away. So we we'll weigh that down with some extra compost. That was my very first time. So if everybody watches this, then they'll be able to go and do one them by themselves, won't they? Or in pairs, perhaps. We've obviously got all this soil that we've dug out of our holes, um, which we don't want to have to be taking away anywhere else. So we'll kind of spread this all around. And this is going to go underneath the cardboard because, with this being soil, it's probably put quite a lot of seeds, weed seeds in there from previous things growing here. And the whole point of the mulch is that we'll, it'll help to well, do several things really. Um, but one of them is that because we're going to use this lovely municipal green waste compost, this isn't going to have any weed seeds in it because in the composting process, it gets really hot, it gets above 60 degrees and that kills off any weed seeds that are in there. So we're just putting this right around the plant. And so that one of the main reasons we're doing this, almost the main reason, is, is to stop this grass growing up um, around our blackcurrant and competing with the roots of the blackcurrant for moisture and things. We're planting them fairly close together on here because we want it to act as a bit of a hedge as well. Yeah, we've got the rest of the trees and shrubs here that we're going to be planting for the, the fruit forest uh, project here at the Brewster's Road site. Um, so on the, the shrub side of things, uh, we've got here some red currants and white currants. We've also got black currants. Uh, here we've got jostaberries, uh, a cross between gooseberry and black currants. We've got some raspberries, there's, there's 10 raspberries in each of these plots here. Uh, some blueberries, we've already got a couple of blueberries in already, so we want to go over there. Uh, and then we've got a lot of tree fruit, top fruit here as well. Uh, so we've got a couple of cherries, a couple of different varieties there to, to come into fruit at just slightly different times. We've got a couple of pears as well, including one here I'm quite excited about. It's a variety called Humble, which is a, a stripy pear, it's I think uh, pink and pink and yellow or pink and green stripes on a pear, which should be quite interested. Uh, what else have we got here? 
We've got a couple of plums as well. Uh, one of them's golden gauge and one of them's called blue tit, so a nice blue oh. plum. And uh, also an apricot. So apricots usually like it uh, a little bit warmer than our normal climate here. So we're going to train this one up against a wall on the, on the back side of the, the office building here, um, facing kind of southeastish, so it gets plenty of extra warmth from the wall. And then to finish off a couple apples as well. Um, so those generally will be going around this, this sort of back area of the, the old school building, the office building, uh, along by the top wall a little bit. Um, and then we'll see what we think after that with plenty more current bushes that could go in um, amongst the, there as well. So yeah. it's all there for the community to help themselves with. Obviously, it might be a year or two before there's that much fruit yeah. around. Yeah. But, uh, um, so yeah, the, the general idea is to get communities involved with what's you know close to them and enjoy being part of the process and enjoy the, the healthy free fruit at the end Great. of it.